Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Trushish. You can also call me Jake. And today we've got the National University 3v3 in Japan in the OPO6 ST13 meta. We've showcased a couple rounds of this tournament. Some really, really exciting games, actually. The first two rounds. Check out the playlist if you have not seen that already. In today's video, we're going to be checking out the 3v3. A lot of these 3v3 decks are similar with a lot of their decks. Almost all of them are running Sakazuki and Gekko Moria, but... This blue team on the bottom here running Reiju Vinsmoke, the Vinsmoke Reiju Germa 66 deck that is very, very cool to watch. Very exciting. One of my favorite decks heading into the OPO6 format. Not because I think it's the best, but I think it's just really, really fun. While the red top team is playing a now. Now, full disclosure, as we get into this video, this is not my official content. This is the official live stream that we're watching in here. So if you want to watch this yourself, maybe not hear my commentary, check out the description below where you can find the link to the actual video and watch that. And so in this one, it looks like we're going to be watching Reiju Vinsmoke versus Gecko Moria. The Moria going first, and I actually think both players are probably in a position they want to be in, right? I think Moria does like going first, and I think the Vinsmoke family likes going second. The reason that they like going second is because a lot of their like two-drop evolutions, some of them are, uh, like I said, two-drops, so they get to evolve kind of right away potentially. But over... Oh, no, 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 I forgot to see what this was. Wait, wait, wait. And so over here, the player on the right is going first, so they probably won the dice roll, I would think. I don't know if it matters who won the dice roll on that one. And so here we go into this one. I'm excited to see this. I've got my cheat sheet for all of the OPO6 cards that haven't released in English yet and learning about what is going to happen. I'm excited to see this one and let me know down in the comments too if you're excited for either of these two decks these are two new archetypes coming into the one piece trading card game in op05 and i know at least a lot of people on my locals are excited for gecko moria and i'm excited for the vinsmoke family so and so the reju's hand starts off they had to mulligan and they get a lot of boss monsters so what's nice though is they have the kaya the kaya they can play turn one they might not get to play anything down to evolve but they get to trash several of their you know evolution those seven drops and the four drop to be able to uh, evolve in a future turn so not a terrible starting hand you just need to find off the Kaya your German 66 kingdom and so the Moria here they've got a turn one Sindri so not a bad hand at all and then the ability to you know use the leader effect trash the Perona and then play the Perona so not too bad in my opinion. I do like this start from both players. I would assume though that probably the Moria has a better start overall. We saw the speed of Moria in the last video. Could be a little bit overwhelming for the Vinsmoke Germa 66 crew. So we'll see exactly how this goes, but I'm excited to see this one. Five life on the left, four on the right and so it looks like oh wait is the vinsmoke family oh it looks like the vinsmoke family is going first so they're opting to go first maybe that was just left from the previous round and so they're just gonna pass they're not even gonna play the kaya to get these guys in the discard pile why would you not play that turn one I don't know. Actually, I would love for someone to let me know down in the comments. But as we go into this one, the Moria is not playing the Sindri turn one. Oh, very interesting. So both of these players playing a little bit slower in this. So now on the three dawn turn, they're going to play the Kaya. I guess the reason that I would maybe not play Kaya turn one is so then you could Kaya right into the um, either the stadium or 
or the um, other thing that I'm thinking of, like the two drop bodies that evolve. So you're playing the German Kingdom. That's going to be an activate main trash a card. Look at the top three. Reveal one German uh, card in your uh Re reveal one germa card and then add it to your hand i don't know why that was so difficult for me to say and so they find the raju the two drop raju evolves into a four drop if you don minus one and so now going into the moria's turn after that six swing takes the life and so now at four Dawn now, you've got a couple different options. You could also now play your Sindri and use a leader effect, get that Perona down. Maybe the Perona trashes an important card in the hand, although I think you have to be careful with the Peronas, right? Because the Peronas may actually not be a good card in this matchup in terms of the discarding a card from your opponent's hand because you give your opponent the opportunity to drop their like evolution per se cards so could be really interesting to see like how this interaction plays out i didn't think of that at first and so now what would you do then you're just going to do a five swing right here might just play the borsalino right away and just play it a little bit slower and so with that five swing going to be countering out with that 1k counter and just playing that borsalino right there that four cost 1k counter was a yonji right there so if they've got a, a little two cost yonji they could potentially evolve them so going to be going to five now at this point they don't have a raju to evolve into but they do have a german 66 search event card in there as well as the stadium so got a couple options in finding these small body characters so going to be starting off playing this german 66 event card it is look at the top five and then finding a germa other than germa 66 that event card and so thinking about what they want to grab they've got a couple different options in there basically their whole deck almost is the Vince smoke family and going to be finding that four drop what's that guy called again the four drop ichi so that is a quote-unquote baby character in this list so going to be laying that down immediately activate main minus one dawn put that in the trash and put the seven cost that they pitched earlier off the kaya in play and so that character right there has an on play effect if you have equal or less dawn on your field than your opponent give up to one of your characters 2000 minus 2000 power for this turn and this character gains rush so Putting minus 2,000 on the Borsalino blocker. Going to be swinging leader now to the leader. So, looks like they could Borsalino. The Borsalino would only be a 4K, though, so it would die unless you gave up counters. So, I think you're in a position now where you just let this Borsalino stick. And so, countering out of the first one with the Rebecca, and then taking the second one with the Sabo. Going to be then going into the Germa. 66 stadium pitching that raju but then drawing some more could grab another ichi right here and i think that's what they're leaning oh no grabbing a different guy this is niji that they grab that's the five cost niji that they could evolve into so maybe an option to pitch either off counter or the stadium germa 66 stadium next turn potentially and so moving into the six dawn turn now for the moria it is three life to four the moria has not gotten anything at all right now these big bodies are getting cheated out very very quickly so they got to think about what they want to do to cheat out bodies of their own I don't think you really have a way of getting rid of this guy besides swinging over him. So maybe the Kuzan wouldn't be the worst thing to play. You would get to draw a card and potentially in the future uh, use that minus four effect if he does stick. I don't know if on play there is too much that you can do, but they did just reveal that Niji. So I think what they're thinking about potentially is if they do play that kuzan that niji if it does come down on play they could 
return that Kuzon back into the owner's hand. So it's basically like wasting for Dawn because you can't even use it for counter. So a really interesting situation at this point right now. Could play the Sabo and just block her up like crazy. Going to be swinging the Borsalino. So the Borsalino 6K swing is going to have to force either a life or a 2K out of this one. And so, or no, it's a 5K swing. I'm sorry. The 6K is only on your opponent's turn. So they're just going to discard that four cost Yonji right there. And so going to be just be swinging six now in there. And it's going to be a Germa 66 activate main pop, or I'm sorry, it's just draw a card. It's just a draw card trigger and so they drew the missed double finger there and so with the rest of the dawn they're going to be playing that sabo just again going to be blockering up protecting that borsalino and drawing two cards a sabo and a kuzon so it looks like they're looking to maybe pitch the two kuzons i wouldn't hate that because after reading that niji the kuzon might not be so valuable in this matchup, although could be good, and we'll see how Reju in the Vinsmoke Germa 66 crew does on this turn. So now they're at 246 Dawn. Remember, they have some Dawn minus one effects that they do throughout their turn. So at six Dawn, even with the opposing player, gonna be thinking about what they want to do. Do. They could play a Kaya, draw some more, pitch that big 5k body in hand, but you kind of risk potentially taking down another important piece. I don't mind actually this right here first. Ooh, I don't know if I, mm, I don't know what I would have done. The reason that I didn't mind doing the stadium first is because then you could find that card right there, the four drop rage you and then use Kaya to pitch it and then evolve. But that's not exactly how they're going to be doing it, although they did find that four drop Reju. They'll attach one Dawn, swing six at lead, and so we'll see what they decide to do. Your Sindri is a two cost counter, and the Perona is a two cost counter. So could pitch either one of those two cards to just get out of the swing at seven. So life is tied at three apiece right now. Could also pitch a 1k counter and block with the Sabo if you wanted to, but I think they're saving the Sabo for the uh, for the rush guy that was played down last turn. I don't remember his name. I'm not at this point in the anime yet. Ichi. Ich Ichiji? Ichiji? Maybe? And so thinking about what they want to do, thinking about pitching that Perona like I mentioned. Going to be pitching that 2k counter Perona right there and so five dawn left they could hard play that five cost niji right there put the borsalino back in hand and so maybe thinking about like swinging and trying to pop the sabo so swinging this 7k at life and trying to pop the sabo and then just clear board with the niji that could be an interesting thing that they're trying to do right now You could block with the Sabo and pitch the Sindri for 8k on that one, and then you'd still have that Sabo on field. And it looks like that's what they're actually going to do right here. So blocking with the Sabo, keeping that there, and then it's going to be that hard play Niji to put that Borsalino back in the opponent's hand. There's two options right there. K up to one of your opponent's characters that costs two or less, which that effect doesn't matter at this point because you have no like minus in cost effects and there's no like brand news or anything like that on the field sindries stuff like that so not going to be able to use that but the borsalino going back in hand is nice because that's one less swing that could potentially come your way this turn so looking to be pretty all right for the vin smoke germa 66 crew on the ride i do think they've had somewhat more control in this game the thing about this though and that we learned in the previous video is that even if you go down kind of early if you have card advantage that's really really strong with the gecko moria deck so gecko moria has way more cards I think we can both agree on that. And so the 5k swing right there, going to be getting the Raju, four cost Raju there. And so we'll see 
how they respond with the rest of their seven dawn that they've got going on. They're one dawn off of the Moria and didn't even use a leader effect in that one. Could hard play the Hina. If you hard play the Hina though, like what does that really get you? You have two Borsalinos in hand. So it's like really you're just putting down a body at that point because the Borsalinos won't be swinging. They're just blockers there. So thinking about what they want to do. Oh, did they have eight Dawn? Oh, my bad. I miscounted. They had eight Dawn. So they're going to be grabbing the Moria, putting up the Kuzon and the Sindri. The Sindri is going to use the Sindri effect to discard the top five from the deck. Absalom, Rob, Lucci, two Sabos, and a Branu. So you did get the Absalom in there, which is nice and going to be effective in that sense. And going to get a Dr. Hog back as well in hand. So it looks like they're just going to pass it off to the Raju at that point. So moving into this next turn here, we'll see exactly what they want to do. The Dr. Hog back could be good to get a Thriller Bar card from the trash into the hand, but might not see that until a little later. We'll see how it goes. And so several characters in the trash at this point for the uh, Reju player. They did top deck that one drop character as well, Sora. And so maybe thinking about playing that because they do have equal or less on than your opponent. You would get to play a 4,000 power vin smoke family type from the trash so could be good and so using the german kingdom stadium first <clears throat> they find a two drop seven drop and the stadium you can't grab the stadium but you could grab that seven drop ichiji character or that two drop who is that two drop i think that's a yonji two drop yes it is so grabbing that yonji to drop there to eventually potentially evolve into the um the four drop yonji that yonji is a blocker which could be nice in the upcoming turn but they're going to be thinking about what they want to do on this one you've got two 2k counters you've got how much dawn do they have two four six eight dawn so you could play a vin smoke judge Potentially the Vin Smoke Judge on play minus one, trash two cards from your hand, play four German 66 type characters with 4,000 power or less from your trash with different names. And then Dawn minus one, activate main once per turn, rest up to one of your opponent's Dawn cards. So could do something like that, but first swinging that 6K body. And so looking at the trash right now about what they can do, really just thinking like, okay, if a judge comes down this first or this turn what could they play how many guys could they get on the field from this and so they're thinking about that in terms of like whether they take life here or not whether they counter out and they're just going to counter out with the 2k suru because that was only a 6k swing and so now playing the judge like i mentioned right there going to be doing that dawn minus one to play all of those dudes and trashing two cards a double finger and the yonji so playing the yonji the ichiji and the reiju going to be playing all those down and getting rid of that character that he just swung with going to be going in then drawing a card off of that oh it says once per turn your turn leader effect when your dawn cards on your field is returned to your dawn deck draw one card so using that effect my apologies so going to be using the reiju to evolve into the four drop reiju the four drop reiju so you have dawn equal or less to your opponent and if you have five or less cards in hand draw two cards so really really good combo there to draw two more cards and they happen to be two more Nijis and so doing another Dawn minus one to evolve the Yonji the Yonji is going to grab that Yonji blocker like I mentioned and so got a blocker on the field now and then finally 
doing the Ichiji to get another one of those rush characters that we saw them trash at the beginning of the game. So they have two more swings coming up in these seven drop uh, Ichijis. But first, going to be swinging 5k somewhere. It's going to be a Dr. Hogback counter on there. And so now the 7k swings are coming. Only 4 Dawn left in there. Going to be a 6 Dawn in their next turn. Interesting position. And so they're going to be swinging those 7s after taking that first one and finding another Dr. Hogback. You're going to think about what they want to do. They would have to pitch at least two cards here, whether that's a 2k and a 1k or could actually just pitch one if they have another 2k in hand which they don't they don't have another 2k i was gonna say you could potentially use sabo block and then pitch a 2k but they're just going to take that sabo block there instead of pitching any of the cards in their hand so going into this next turn all 10 dawn for the gecko moria and so drawing a card now it's going to be a suru 2k counter it doesn't really help you in terms of what's going on right now but it could be nice in defending this next attack because there are three characters on the field that have not swung yet that blocker is a 5,000 power body so really good blocker stats to be honest um to be able to potentially swing the next turn and so thinking about what you want to do now you've got all attend on the gecko moria could provide dividends potentially i'm not 100 percent sure if you do want to do that if you have a borsalino in the trash you could bring that back up you could also get a rob lucci using something like the kuzan to minus some dawn you do have that sewer there so you could minus a couple different characters right especially getting rid of that blocker potentially so could maybe do something like that use the suru minus two to the blocker and then maybe like oh no the kuzan could do that the kuzan could negate either the blocker or the reju entirely so you might like swing and it looks like they're going to be swinging six at the at life minusing the reju so if they minus the reju right here putting the reju at zero and then use the other dawn to use suru and minus the niji blocker or i'm sorry yonji minus the yonji blocker two that would be two on the yonji and zero on the reju they could go in and use gecko moria right gecko moria grabs like a blocker if they've got one in there that's the oh no they would have to use ooh they would have to grab like Branu and Rob Lucci, I think. I think that would be probably a good combo, Branu and Rob Lucci. Just play the the Rob Lucci active and then rest the Branu. You still get the on play effect of the Branu. So they're going to be taking that life right there, grabbing a Ichiji, I believe. So thinking about what they want to do at this point, you do already have one Moria on the field. I think they're eyeing up the play that I was talking about. I would really like that play. It would get rid of both of those, and then you can kind of just swing freely with that uh, Moria into the Rush Ichijis or something along those lines, or maybe into life right there. You could even swing the leader like into life after that, maybe bait a card and then swing your Gecko Moria character to potentially more likely take out one of those Ichijis. But you do have to play the Suru first. <laughs> you don't forget to play the Suru if you are going to go that route. I think that it's a nice route because you, you get rid of some bodies, right? You get rid of some bodies and you've got free reign on like getting rid of the blockers. So you just kind of replace the Suru overall. I don't think you swing the Moria first because then if they just block with the blocker, then you're like, okay, what am I doing now? So not opting to do what I'm thinking with the Suru, just going ahead and swinging six right here. They could still grab some good stuff though on this they could like grab 
um, a Borsellino blocker potentially, or just a Rebecca blocker, and then grab some other goodies, right? They could grab like they do have a three drop Hina in hand, so they like they could Gecko Moira for Rebecca and Branu, use the Branu to search, right? And then with the Rebecca grab the Rob Lucci from the discard pile and then play the Hina, but then you wouldn't get to pop anything actually. So I don't know if that's as actually as good of a play as I was thinking. So I'm not hundred percent sure exactly what you do. You either go Borsalino or Rebecca with the, uh, with the Gecko Moria. And so they're just going to block and also use a counter off of that that uh niji is a 1k counter but because of the yonji the yonji because they have less on than their opponent is actually a 6k blocker i forgot to mention so if you're curious how a 5k and a 1k counter got out of a 6k swing it's actually because that yonji is a 6k body at this point and that's actually the entire game as well. That's something that just happens the whole time. So even through their turn, it's going to be active. So that 9K swing coming in there, I assume it's at an each G. And so they're going to have to commit a 2K and a 1K to get out of that. That's going to be two cards there, kind of two important cards I feel like at this stage of the game, the Vinspoke family really running on like a small hand in this game. So we'll see exactly how this goes. Looking through the trash, seeing what they can do. There's that Rebecca there on the floor. Don't forget about that. So thinking about maybe what they could grab. All right, didn't forget about the Rebecca off the Moria because I, I feel like your opponent is really showing like okay I'm going to 8 drop right here right so you got to think about what you want to do going to be pitching 3 oh 3 cards right there so it's going to be uh, basically oh 2k and 2 ones. so I think that was actually going at life at that point I don't think it was going for the Ichijis I don't know if I would have not gone for the Ichiji. I feel like the Ichijis are so annoying. They're 7k bodies, right? They're so big, and you've got a judge and a rage you that's gonna stare at you, and also this blocker guy here. So I don't know. I maybe would have gone for the KO, done a little bit of board wiping, and then swung at the rage you, do a little bit of board control. But I guess, like on the flip side, at eight, no, they're not gonna be at eight dawn next turn. So I don't know, they can't play Judge next turn. But anyways, it's going to be off of the... Oh, one thing that I didn't think about that they could do. So with the Gecko Moira, they're actually still going to do that play that I mentioned. Going to be grabbing the Suru and the Rob Lucci, I assume using the Suru to minus the blocker Yonji and using Rob Lucci to KO both the Reju. Oh, whoa, wait a minute. Okay, so they use the Kuzan to minus. Wait a minute. They use the Kuzan to minus the Judge. So that's four. Then they use the Suru to minus it two more to make it a two overall, minus six for the turn. So then just using Rob Lucci to get rid of that. Interesting that they decided to do that instead of going for the blocker and the Reiju. They're at six dawn now. Maybe you're just really afraid of the judge because the judge is like really the only thing that can directly compete with the character Moria's. Six dawn and only two cards in hand. That's tough. Moving into this turn, remember to activate main Germa Kingdom, that stadium. They do have to trash a card from their hand. So could be a little dicey at this point if they want to get rid of an evolution guy, that three drop right there, or the judge. I don't know if they really want to get rid of either of them, to be honest. So putting one Dawn to the side, maybe... Thinking about swinging like a bunch of eight, like eight, eight. Um, 
that would be two Dawn used, and then you'd have four Dawn left. So you wouldn't be able to swing all eights, but maybe you could swing like seven, seven, seven. Maybe you could swing sevens all around, but I don't think that's a really good idea. Like, I don't think you can win that way. So you got to focus on like potentially clearing board at this point, right? Clear board first and then go into like maybe KOing next turn, but those Morias on the side are going to be really, really obnoxious and knocking out your characters, right? Ooh, yeah, this is a tough spot, I feel like. I feel like the Vinsmoke family did really, really well to start, and then their hand just got so low they couldn't keep refilling it, and then the, uh, the Moria is just kind of running away with it at this point. And so taking down... That judge going to be looking at the top three. All right, there's going to be an event card, the Searcher event card, a Sora, and then also the five drop Niji. So the five drop Niji may not really help you too much. It could get rid of a Rob Lucci, but they're going to be grabbing a Sora. The Sora on play, discard a card from your hand. If you have equal or less Dawn to your field than your opponent, add up to one character card of 4,000 power or less that has the Vinspoke family type from the trash. So grabbing a card in hand at this point, it is a 2K counter for anyone who is curious. And so... We'll see how this goes right here. I do, I mean, I really think this is a bad spot for the Vinsmoke family, to be honest. This feels like kind of a tricky deck to play overall. There's a lot of like Dawn Minus effects and a lot of like trash card from hand effects. And it's like in Nami, right? Like Nami, when you play Nami, you don't want your hand size to get real small. And I feel like it's like that with almost every deck, but Nami especially, so going to be starting out attaching one to the Reju leader and swinging six and it's going to be a 2k counter Suru I don't know if that was at the Kuzan or at leader if I had to take a guess it was probably Kuzan but with two life a piece you gotta do something here so thinking about what they want to do they could Play that three drop Niji to be able to get that five drop in their discard pile on the field. I'm pretty sure they have a five drop Niji in their discard pile. And then you'd have three Dawn left to do stuff. If you do that though, I feel like you maybe give up the idea of KOing the Gecko Moira characters, which is tough. So starting off swinging six. Now, remember that uh, Yonji is a 6k blocker at this point, so it would be able to swing 6. And so thinking about pitching Borsalinos, maybe Borsalino and Dr. Hog back here, another 7k worth of counter. And so getting the rest of their four Dawn, going to be swinging... How much Dawn are they attaching? I thought they were going to attach all four Dawn to him, and I was like, ooh, I don't know if I'd do that, Chief, but I think I would rather attach the Dawn to the Ichijis to be able to KO, like, the eight drops. But thinking about what they want to do here, it could be a 7K swing. The 7K swing probably would take life. Right, but you you would have to get all three of these swings to connect in order to win. So 7k swing right here. Looks like it's going at life. They can't counter out of it. They only have seven. What are they swinging at? Is he just kind of like bluffing at this point? Being like, hmm, yes, what do I do at this point? Because he can't get out of this. <laughs> He has to take the life if he's swinging at life, right? And so it looks like one of the other games finished up. So maybe like... Oh, did something happen? Is a judge like coming in or something? I think that's one of the judges. So it's a 7k swing. You got to take that life right there. Maybe doing a little bit of bluffing. And what is that? That's a Moria? Yeah, that's an A drop Moria right there. And that's a that's a card that's not gonna help you actually in the future swing. So 
actually, I think right here, the Vinsmoke family player could win if they like attach one Dawn to the other EGG, swing eight, and then put the rest of the three Dawn on the Yonji and swing nine. I think they actually win if they do that. Because even if this card is a 2k counter in this last life. Oh, come on. Just do it. I know we have the advantage of like the hand. Oh, do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Attach that one down. Attach it. Attach it. Attach it. But the thing is, I think you swing with the seven first. I think you have to swing with the seven first, right? He's thinking about what he wants to do. Flicking that finger. Come on, man. Attach one to the Ichiji. He could do it. All right, one Dawn. I really think the one Dawn for the eight is good. Yes, 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 yes. And he swings. Swings the eight. He's making sure. Are you swinging at leader? Don't fall for the trap. Swing at leader. Swing at leader. Swing at leader. Don't fall for the trap. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's not worth swinging at Kuzan. Leave him alone. And so taking that life, what is it? It's a 2K counter, but swinging nine. It's going to be, oh boy. You only can tie it. So yes, the 1000 power goes in. And I think the Vince Oak family just won that one, right? I think he just won right there absolutely wonderful it was very scary if he did not win that turn there was no way he was going to survive very 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 cool i feel like a great job right there showcasing that i'm so glad we got to watch that game that was fun even though it was chaotic because i didn't know like half the cards and their names for sure because that was like one of the first times that i've seen the reju vinsmoke german 66 crew at it so moving on into this game it's the kind of curry and gecko moria i don't know the score of the three on three so i don't know if this game actually matters but the uh anel player only has one life left and it is that shirahoshi there and then the moria player has two life left and a lot of bodies on the field <laughs> So it is the NL player's turn right now. It looks like they've got all of their Dawn left to be able to work with. This table also feels chaotic. Like usually the Japanese players on stage are really, really good about keeping the cards like in their vicinities, right? Like where they're labeled. But this game feels way more chaotic. Like you've got a Katakuri up there that's like in the life area. You've got your deck in the character area, the trash in the deck area going to start out by swinging 10 it looks like 10 at leader and so thinking about what they want to do it's not going to be a russian l so i think you could probably take the life if you want at this point no need really to counter out of it if you feel like you can win the game right here now with five dawn left though there could be something like a sanji blocker there so that life is going to be taken no counter or trigger or, well, it may have countered, but at least no trigger. And just going to be swinging Katakuri at life. I think this is kind of with only a two-card hand, and I think one of them is Impact. There's a world where you could have maybe done it with Impact, but especially with the blocker there with that Sabo, it's just the end-all game. So the Gecko Moria looks like it's going to get the win here. Going to be swinging probably nine at lead just swing nine with the other one and then swing 19 no need to distribute you don't need to do that <laughs> going to be swinging seven with that sabo at lead going to be getting that shirahoshi proccing the shirahoshi drawing three cards it's going to be a a lin lin an event card and a beige so nothing really to help out i think there's a yamato in hand so pitching the impact and the okiku and gaining a life out of that one ditching the other impact so a 2k and a yamato in hand i think going to be a card no trigger just a gadatsu and then pitching the rest of the hand for counter and then the hogback getting the win so it looks like 
the team on the right winning that Ray, the Reju Vinsmoke player, he's like, man, my brain hurts after that game, thinking about that last turn. So the Vinsmoke family moves on in the tournament. I'm so excited. I hope we get to see more games of them as well. Let's take a peek on what the next game is going to be. Ooh. Oh my gosh, the next video is going to be probably my favorite that we're going to watch. Oh no, I just let it go away. The next round is going to have Yamato and Red Yellow Sabo. I personally hope we see Red Yellow Sabo. We have yet to see it in one of our matches, but when ST13 comes out, I think I'm going to play a lot of this deck. I think this deck is really, really cool, and I love Sabo overall, so personally i'm excited for the next video i hope you are too and thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this click for more subscribe for more and i'll see you later